Hello and welcome, Nope Coach listeners. Yes, that's the right show. (laughs) I have two (laughs) podcasts, so I'm like, hang on, which one am I on today? It's your host, Suzanne Kohlberg. Today, episode 37, Money Archetypes. I'm going to be talking about The Innocent with Linda James. So welcome back, Linda. Thank you. I love this framework that you teach. And I know altogether, is there six archetypes? Eight. Eight. Yeah, I couldn't remember. But I was like, these shows are 15 minutes or less. So we're going to focus on the one. And today you're going to talk to us about the innocent. And I'm really curious most about this one because a lot of the other archetypes you talk about, people have some frame of reference for the martyr, the victim, that kind of thing. But the innocent, I don't know if it's as commonly known by that phrase. Once you get into it, I'm sure people will recognize themselves. So take us away. Sure. So, you know, money money types and money archetypes are a really good way at looking at kind of behavioral patterns and beliefs and emotions around money and then using that intel to be able to create change. So it's really about getting to that subconscious layer of our um, behavior and existence, you know. So the innocent. The innocent really is best understood by when you hear the phrase putting your head in the sand or the ostrich approach. It is a money avoidance kind of pattern, though, but when we look deeper than just the symptom of what we're seeing, it actually comes back to feelings of anxiety, overwhelm, nervousness. Um, When we like to be non-confrontational, we're seeking security, those types of things. So, um, yeah, the innocent isn't as well known, but it actually usually is one of the most common when it comes to women around money who are having challenges. I love this. And I love how you, you, we, my mistake is in, I didn't fully define archetype before we got into it, but you defined it for us, a pattern of behavior. Because I think sometimes when people shy away from or don't explore archetypes because they can feel that they're really mired in whichever one it is. And when we say the innocent or the fool or the martyr or whichever one, you are not that in its entirety. It's like a mask that you can put on, or as you said, a pattern of behavior that we can tend to fall into because of familiar or societal conditioning or things that have happened in the past. But like like a mask, unless you're in, uh, have you read Sarah J Mass? the um, Court of Throne and Roses, people listening who are familiar with that series, where they literally could not take the masks off because they were cursed. (laughs) In this case, you can choose to remove the mask or notice that, oh, I'm wearing this again. Like I've stepped into this. I've let this pattern of behavior take over driving the vehicle. But I can also invite it back to the back seat lovingly, not, you know, excise it from us or make it wrong or bad. Because I think the other thing that you talk about too is there's gifts in each of the archetypes as well as you know things that we want to maybe not do so much exactly I'm so glad you mentioned that right because really like avoidant behavior is just one of the challenges of that archetype but um the gift of the innocent is like being able to see things with fresh eyes you know it's like a business owner or someone that goes out and looks at money you know with this kind of um naivety but not necessarily from you know a place of it being challenging but like it can be good you know it can we can have this childlike appreciation of joy and pleasure and enjoyment around money when we're in the positive you know kind of place of the innocent um but the challenging side definitely can you know like um be more predominant when we are second guessing ourselves or thinking that other people know better than us when it comes you know to money but there's anyone, definitely positive and negative sides to it. For anyone listening, if they're like, this sounds great, but I have no idea where to start, you have a quiz on your website. So do you want to talk a bit about that? Like I, another thing I probably should have led with, but, you know, this is how we roll. <laughs> yeah, so there is a money types quiz on my website, which will actually help you understand a more kind of, I guess, comprehensive or rich picture of um what we are presenting with around money. And so it won't just say you're an innocent because remember, we're not that thing. It's not a personality or stuck trait that we have. This is an expression of behavior at a point in time. So it it is reflective of where we are internally at, you know, the moment. So it'll say like, there's this much innocent, this much, you know, victim, this much fool, you know, but also 
there's really strong um, archetypal behavior we have, which is the warrior and the magician. So the warrior is the practical side of things. Magician is like the internal trusting, synchronicities, that side of stuff. Um, so that quiz can really help us to then see what's coming forth because that then is like shining this laser light on what we can do about it. So with the innocent, if you're feeling anxious, overwhelmed, you know, like it starts to really um, highlight what can we do about that, which usually is creating more safety and stability around our finances. So it might be that you're ignoring this stuff over here. It might be life admin. It might be actually getting just clarity around what's happening and you're feeling unsafe and not secure. And that's then the emotions coming up. So then we can look at that and go, what do I need to do about this? Do I need to actually look at my bank account before it's you know down to whatever amount? Do I need to decide to create some type of proactive cash you know, strategy for myself, even if it's super simple? That's creating safety and security. It's foundation building to then move us out of feeling anxious or overwhelmed. I have a question. And for anyone listening, if this doesn't resonate, I highly recommend regardless following Linda, signing up for her newsletter. She explains this also beautifully. So there's going to be a little bit of nuance to this question because I've worked with you and known you for a number of years. But when you speak about like the lighter and the shadow aspects of a of an archetype, if you are experiencing the innocent in the more shadow, like I'm head in the sand, I'm overwhelmed, I'm ignoring it, does that then more likely call in another pattern of like the fool archetype where you're like, mm. I'm suddenly going to go to a get rich quick scheme and like exactly. end up on this downward spiral? Yeah, so if we go an innocent can quite often feel like others know more than them, then it's easy to be susceptible to any type of marketing tactics or anything that's thrown your way, right? That's when we start going, well, that person must know more than me or all those others are experts, even though the person underneath it, like I feel like quite often women have this kind of financial dysmorphia, which is they think they're worse at money than they actually are. So if that's the place that we're sitting in, because we are not really paying attention to what's coming up for us, then of course the fool can come out. They kind of tag team like, you know, WWF wrestling or something. It's like, right, let's go play because I'm feeling like I don't know anything or I've got my head in the sand and I'm not sure what to do. And I actually don't want to do the steps. Like it's a bit of a resistant behavior, but I don't want to look at my bank account. You know, I want to just go over here and make money, not manage my money. So then the fool comes out and is like, let's ignore all the little red flags and just live for today. And we're going to go and we're going to go party over here. And I'm going to purchase that, you know, that expensive course or that expensive thing to feel better. Like I'm taking a step towards what I need to do, but it's actually not coming from our most wise place. Our most wise place sometimes is the boring thing. Oh, I need to look at my bank account and know what's happening or I need to address the underlying feelings as to why I'm not looking at my bank account more regularly. I loved how you described that as in I'm not going to actually look at the underlying thing because that's too scary and big and whatever. So I'm just going to do this fantastical thing of make more money. Um, this this thing promises or I'm going to go to the casino or I'm going to buy a lotto ticket and you mm. know do secret style checks in the mail and just manifest <laughs> But yeah, just, even if people it. do, say that actually worked, because some people it might, they yeah. put something out and it goes gangbusters. How often do they end up in the same place? Because as you said, they're not managing underneath. So, you know, more money equals more problems from that lens. Mm. Because ultimately we almost have like, like let's imagine an auric bubble or something, you know, we have this financial capacity. And by going and suddenly selling a crap load of something or bringing a lot of income in doesn't mean you've actually like expanded really what you are internally capable of holding our capacity around money and finances. It just means you brought money in and then it's a bit like having, say, a water tank, though now it's got leaks. Oh, so, I want to explore this more, but I'm pretty sure we're at the end. So we'll have to come yeah. back. So in the meantime, people who are listening is like, oh my goodness, this is really like all the bells are ringing. I need to know more. Where can people find you? At www.velofinancial.com. That's V-A-L-O financial. Lovely. Thank you so much for joining me, Linda. Thank you for listening, everyone. See you on the next one. Bye for now.